I just saw one last question. This is the last one I want to answer, but keep them coming. Um, if anything, we can try to answer them after we do the code refactoring. Um, Vic Peck says that he recently saw uh, the TDD tutorial and was great. It's slowing him down, but he's starting to lose faith. Um, so basically what I will say about that, um, test-driven development, you know, it's it's not an end-all be-all. You know, it's a it's a it's a development process, and you can use it on certain things. I don't use it on everything. And what I would use it on are things that are maybe uh, you know maybe things that require algorithms that I just can't. I'm I'm struggling to plan out. I'm struggling to see how um, the implementation would look. Uh, maybe it's something new that I've never worked with before. In those cases, I would probably use TDD to help drive uh, the code that comes out of that. Um, and I would let that slow me down because that's the compromise I would make. Uh, also, testing in, in game development as well. I think there's a tendency to want to test every single aspect to get 100% code coverage. And in Unity, testing model behaviors is a huge pain because obviously you have to go in, you have to do... Um, you have to cr create objects in your scene. Uh, you're doing that from the code, from your test. That's slow. Uh, and unit tests in general, they're supposed to be super fast. Like a, an entire test suite should not run. Uh, it should not take more than a couple seconds to run in your best case scenario. So, you know, when you're doing things like you're having this scene in memory and you're creating all sorts of objects and it's really slowing down, that is actually, um, that's a red flag. So realistically you should be trying to code and we talked about this just now when we were discussing uh th this previous discussion you need to first worry about your business rules the the, the fundamental rules of your game so one i always go back to because it's always like for some reason the forefront of my mind is like a health health system you might have a fundamental rule that any player or enemy or any object or anything in your game that has health, health can never go below zero. That's just a fundamental thing that you want to validate against in your in your game. So let's say you abstract uh, health into this health class that everything reuses. On that class, you might have a, mo a method called damage or maybe set health. And you want to just write tests that say when damage is called, no matter how many times damage is called, uh, with whatever number that's passed in, a negative uh, health can never be represented as a negative number in your system. That's something you'd write a test for. Now, if you have something like there's a trigger in your scene, and then when the player walks over it, they get damaged, I would not suggest writing a test to ensure that the trigger goes off and your player gets damaged, because that is something that's built into Unity. Unity has their on trigger down Unity event. They should be testing that, not you. As if you have an object that has a trigger and a collider and you have a player that has some logic that if, that reacts to that uh, that trigger going off, you, I would suggest not testing that because that is a Unity thing that they should be validating that works. And you should have a certain trust in Unity as a framework to run that code. However, like I said, if the business rule is that um, your player your player's health can never go below zero, then as long as you have the the test on your health class, the unit test on your health class, ensuring that when dot damage is called, no matter what's passed in, no matter what the value of health is, it doesn't go below zero, then you've covered everything you need to cover for your particular game. So that's just sort of like a, a mindset that you just kind of have to go into, not not chasing after 100% code coverage, mm. um, but chasing after ensuring that the fundamental aspects that are particular to your specific game um, are, are never broken. Those rules are never broken. Yeah, you test the code you write, not the test that you're reliant on. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, I think the, the best metaphor I can come up with for that, if you want to test if a TV remote control works, you don't start at if person presses button does the infrared signal hit computer or hit TV and channel changes? You check if infrared signal hits TV, then channel changes. Because the person might fall asleep, and that shouldn't impact the ability for your test of your infrared signal. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like if you capture components that are outside your control, you're reliant on third party things that could break what your system does. <clears throat> so, in essence, literally what Charles was saying is you don't test if trigger pressed or if on collider box do this, you would you write the code that says um, fire and you put that fire code into the if trigger pressed fire and then you can test the fire code by manually triggering it 
and seeing what it does. Mm -hmm. And so the the fact that something else activates it is incidental. That's nothing to do with your code. And likewise, if you think about an API that provides information, if you've ever written an SDK layer for an API, you'll know there's like a million things that can go wrong. There are HTTP response codes. You can get a 500 because the error gets thrown. You can get a 400 because the response is bad. Yes. get a 401 because I think 401 Authorized. is the unauthorized. Yeah. yeah. And then there's other ones for forbidden and there's other ones. Mm, and that's just, yeah. And they're just the ones that are response codes that go wrong. We haven't even talked about what if you get the model back in a format you didn't expect and oh, things yeah. go wrong. And yeah. what if... Uh, the, what if you give the wrong accept header so you get XML instead of JSON? Now, uh-huh. why am I going through this whole rabbit hole? Because if I have a system that says, get me animals in the zoo, that might be going to an API and going through this entire rat's nest of issues and bugs and coordination and whatever. Hmm. And I don't need my test to have to check, did I get it forbidden because the authorization I applied when I called the zoo database didn't apply? No, that, none of that's relevant to the get me animals in zoo function. <laughs> I, I am testing whether or not when asked for animals, <laughs> And I expect, I, if I give it a, a mock or a substitute that provides me two animals, does the rest of my code know how to respond to those two animals? <laughs> <laughs>